This is the second tip in a three-part series of tips on composite position tolerancing. In this tip, we will see the effect of repeating the primary datum feature reference in the lower segment of a position tolerance. In the first tip, we started with a position tolerance on these two holes that are shown coaxial on the drawing. But if we looked at what could actually happen to each one of these holes with this position tolerance of 0.4, we saw that the axes of the holes individually can tip around quite a bit. So they didn't stay in line by more than 0.4. By adding a composite tolerance or using the continuous feature symbol, either one would work, but we were going to focus on composite tolerancing. So by using composite tolerancing, which means you have one symbol but multiple segments or multiple tolerances, we were able to keep the two holes in line. So this is saying the two holes have to be in position within zero if they're made at their smallest size. As they get bigger, they can misalign a little bit. But let's say I was assembling a shaft in here that would assure assemblability. So that was in our first tip. So once again, composite tolerancing, one symbol but multiple tolerances. And the rule is that that upper segment is locating the features on the part. Any subsequent segments main purpose is to tie the features together in the pattern, to hitch them together if you will. So in the second tip we're going to add another layer to this composite tolerancing because in the last example we tied the holes together but since there was no datum reference they could be out of parallel to the plane established by the primary datum feature A by as much as 0.4 and also out of parallel to the plane established by the secondary datum feature by as much as 0.4. So by adding this segment we are now tightening up the orientation. So the rule for composite is that the first time you see datum feature references in an upper segment they're there to control the location of the feature. If I repeat the datum feature in subsequent segments, in lower segments, then I am tightening up the orientation. So in this case the zero tolerance is controlling the axes of the two holes with respect to one another. The 0.25 is limiting how much that axis then can be out of parallel to the plane established by the primary datum feature. But since it's an orientation tolerance it still allows this axis to float around. That's why we need that upper segment to locate. So you'll see that this 0.4 is a cylindrical zone shown over here in this view and here's a side view of the cylindrical tolerance zones. And that limits where this axis can be with respect to the datums or the, the origins on this part. So if I animate this I think you can see it a little bit better. The axes cannot go outside of the 0.4 and because of the second segment that we've added, the axes cannot tip more than 0.25 with respect to that plane established by our primary datum feature A. Since I didn't repeat B, I could have, but since I didn't repeat it, you'll notice that the axes can be out of parallel as much as 0.4 with respect to the datum plane established by datum feature B. In our next tip in the series, we're going to add another segment here and we're going to bring down datum feature B to show how we can restrict the orientation relative to both datum planes. Still struggling with GD&T? Give us a call. Because of techies, GD&T rules. I'll see you next tip.